again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Business and Economic Forum. This is where we discuss nothing but business and economics. Our topic today is about the LBDI and the Loita Partnership, Investment Partnership. This is part two of the show. We're going to still be examining that deal, whether it's good deal or bad deal for Liberians. Remember, we are coming from the backdrop of uh, six, 62 out of 65 concession agreements signed during the Ellen administration were bogus. So here, another deal that has been signed we're going to be examining it. We have our guest tonight, this afternoon, who's going to be looking at this deal, whether it's a good deal or bad deal. And uh, we're going to be delving into it shortly. Just invite a friend, grab a cup of coffee, and let's discuss. So, gentlemen, welcome to Focus on Liberia. This is our business and economic forum, and we're going to be discussing nothing but business. And I want to welcome Mr. Morris T. Mann, your second time joining us. Mr. Mann, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jar. Thank you for bringing me on today. Thank you so much. Next, we want to welcome uh, a rising political star. He said he'd like to talk business, but all I hear from him is politics. <laughs> Mr. George Preston Sa Lobo. Mr. Lobo, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Next, I uh, want to welcome Mr. William Thomas Bernal King. He's joining us from Southern California. Mr. King, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, once again, I want to thank all of our fans and everything, and also those of you who will be joining us this time around. Uh, we're going to make sure to get your comments in. We're going to be talking about the Loida and the LBDI partnership, like Mr. Dennis just said. So. If you have some thoughts on that, let us know. But if it's a political thought, a political comment, I would know that is because George has influenced you some way to say something political. <laughs> but no, it is all good. Thank you, Mr. Dennis. And we're looking forward to the show. We want to thank George Morris and our, our good guy, Alex. We want to thank you for joining the show. Thank you. By, by the way, uh... Mr. King is a big part of the forum. In fact, he's going to soon, very soon, be taking over from me. He's co-hosting this afternoon on this Business and Economic Forum. Next, we want to welcome the editor of the Business Economic Forum, Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones. Mr. Jones, welcome to Focus on Liberia. That's Mr. Jones right there. Mr. Jones, your audio. Welcome to Focus on Liberia. We are not getting you. All right. Thank you very much, Dennis. And uh, thank you, Mr. Mann, Mr. Williams, Mr. Lopo, and wherever Mr. Jackson is. Welcome to the Business and Economic Forum, the only economic and business show in cyberspace in Liberia. Happy to be here always. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. And guys, uh, we're going to be starting in a minute on... Uh, the LBDI, that is the Liberal Bank for Development and Investment. We're going to be starting. They have signed a partnership agreement with Loita. That's a company from Mauritius. We're going to be delving into that. But before we start that, I want us to briefly go through our water cooler moment. And for today, around the water cooler, we're going to be discussing the economics of sports. Quite recently, our national sports meet, that is soccer and kickball, the finals of the soccer tournament, the, the, the soccer game ended in a complete chaos. We saw Nimba County walking off the field. They've been slapped with fines and suspensions. And uh, they've come back and threatened that they demand apology from the sports minister. If not, if he doesn't apologize within 48 hours, he dared not set forth in Nimba County. The uh, Senate, that's the Committee on Sports, called 
the uh, the sport minister to their session to ask him some questions, see what's going on. So there was a complete chaos. The uh, national sport meeting we understood is uh, was set up to uh, bring about cohesion or uh, reconciliation and promote unity. This year's national county meet was played under the theme sustaining the peace. And uh, so we want to talk about you know the economics of it. Money drives everything. Are we making money for it? Uh, is it set up in such a way that uh, there'll be income for the players? There'll be incentives to play? Are we developing players? What, what are we getting out of it? How are we making money out of it? Or are we losing money? So let's talk economics. And I want uh, Mr. Alex Chuchu Jones to get the ball rolling. Well, um, if, the, if we are making money, obviously it's being um, distributed among people who, a, a few, I, I for sure, I do not think that any of the players make any substantial uh, profit or benefit, which is unfortunate. I do not think the counties, the 14 counties, because the, all the games have been played in the Morovia, 15. Well, the 15 is the most rattled. So for okay. the counties, I don't think they get getting much out of it. And this has been our concern. We had a show, I think, months ago, last year, on the economics of sports. Sports should bring people together. But it should also improve, uh, it, there's also economics behind it where you can develop industries, you can hire people, you can build infrastructure. And unfortunately in Liberia, we don't see none of those things. Uh, the SKD, I think was a gift that was given by, you know, China or, or Hong Kong or one of these countries. Um, but so we don't see much economics if there is. I know people pay to go and it's a problem. It's a serious concern to us and we're gonna dig and get to the bottom of it but it must benefit the people. It must be benefit all of the counties. There should be a stadium in every county and it shouldn't be a Moravia thing. So I'll stop there and uh, let my panelists weigh in on this. Oh, Mr. May, you, you are a business guy. Let's look at the business and economic side of the county meet, looking at specifically at what just transpired. Maybe we are neglecting the business side. Your thoughts? Yeah, Mr. Jad, and for me, I strongly believe that sport is not only for entertainment. If if you look on the if you look at the if you go on the global stage, football brings millions to to economy, like Brazil and other country. Football brings millions to the econ to economic growth in our country. But with in our country. And I don't really see much being done in terms of and looking at the economic side of the of sport or football in our country. I think people just see like, oh yeah, we'll go on the fee. And then at the end of the day, there's no check and balance. There's no um, process of transparency and accountability as to resources generated for the activity and how the resources are allotted to sport development in the country, to building sporting infrastructure around the country, improving the, the, the SKD, I saw the SKD, I saw the carpet, the carpet grass, everything, uh, the, all the carpet grass on the field is gone away. And it, it's sad, that country and how the resources generated from those activities are used. And since the, and the Chinese um, gave us sport stadium, we always go back to them for renovation. I don't know what how this money I use. So I think that should be something like audit of sporting activity to ensure that resources collected and are used for the intended purpose, especially for sporting development. Mr. Lobo, your thoughts on the business economic side of the county meet? Uh, first and foremost, Dennis, let me take this time to welcome all Liberians in cyberspace for joining us. Uh, I want to thank my partners for weighing in on this conversation. Uh, but Dennis, here is how I like to answer these simple questions. You know, sports as a whole on the continent of Africa and in Liberia to be exact. Uh, sports is one thing that you need that unite us, that has been used as a unifying tools 
for all of us. You know, I just to give us a little history on something. I recall after World War III in Monrovia, after Lord had turned the port over to Omni. I recall when we when the display left complex and we went to SKD for the very first match. You know, Dennis, as terrible as the conditions were that day, the Iberians were unified. That day you could not tell what tribe was there, what county you came from, what religion you belong to, what political party you affiliated. What we saw that day was Liberians being one, in one accord. So these initiative in a country that have been ravaged by war, our expectations are simple, that government will use these tools to the best of their ability. You see, it's hard to answer policy questions and don't look at leadership. Uh, whatever happened to sports in Liberia, we have to blame the national government. As we know, the county meet is an initiative of the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Uh, so the Ministry of Youth and Sports happens to be under the executive branch of government. Minister works at the will and pleasure of the president. So definitely it boils down to leadership. What do the government want to achieve through sports? What the government want to use sports for? These are programs that government can use to increase revenue. If the government was well structured, if the government had the right technocrats in place, if the government had the skill and knowledge for people in position, the youth and sport itself could turn that particular government ministry into a county meeting from one county to another. We could organize a universal tournament. We could organize community colleges tournaments. But we could also support other sporting activities across the country. I listened to Mr. Mr. Uh, my good friend Alex talk about the need to decentralize these things because it seems like everything is central in Monrovia. You know, then it's like I said, again, it speaks to the national government. Uh, if the national government believes that decentralization is the fundamental core of moving on forward, then we'll go from there. I think someone join me. Someone was speaking, so I wanted to I, I wanted to make sure someone said something so I can stop. Yep, just go ahead and conclude. conclude. Okay. So 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 Dennis, from a revenue perspective, I think other counties can argue that Mosorado benefit the most. Uh, as you know, Mosorado hosts 1.5 million people. So obviously SKD has a bigger capacity. Uh, but if we focus on decentralization, where government says, you know what, there's a need maybe to invest in building at least a 15,000 capacity stadiums in every county so that the county meet can be rotational on a rotational basis. All the finals can always be played in Mosorado because at least this year, Mosorado hosts the county meet finals. Next year, Lofa, the following year, Bon, Lima, and so forth. But overall, overall, what the country me was intended to achieve, Dennis, was unity. And it did not achieve its ultimate goal because what we saw at the end of the game was not a display of unity. And mm -hmm. it's, it's mind baffling to know that sports on our Africa's greatest president, our Africa's greatest soccer icon, that sports itself is incapacitated. This itself is just, it's so, it's so revealing that the man who won the world best as a soccer legend, that under his leadership, the man who was known to be the unifier, that his government cannot host a tournament to unite the people. This is what the leadership should, should be concerned Thank about. You. So I will stop there. Thank you. Let me go to William. And uh, I, I'm one of those who, uh, who do not believe that uh, we can use the counter me to unite the country because that's competition. You want the other team to be dead so that you can win. <laughs> I don't see the unity, but let's come to the, the one. How do we make money? How does the country make money out of sport? What are some of the things that we need to inject so that uh, we, we, 
we focus or we generate revenue from the sport, even as we uh, develop players and uh, we reconcile or as we sustain the two school sports. Thank you, uh, Dennis. Um, I'll try to be real brief with this because I have a lot to say, being that uh, growing up as a child who were uh, from a family that was heavily invisible 11, i.e., and me being that I was a borrow fan, always would be the red shirt in the middle of the yellow seat. And uh, I remember also that my mother was also at one point in time, uh, president or vice president of, of IE, along with my uncle, uh, Mr. Bernard. So uh, I remember the players coming, having camp at the house, going to different uh, 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 soccer games, football game, all, all around Liberia. Uh, something that you uh, brought up, Dennis, in terms of, of how can we commercialize or monetize uh, our, our sport, soccer? Um, I think there's a couple of things. One is uh, using media as a uh, weaponized tool, uh, giving some of the players that are there on those teams, telling a story about their life. Uh, that, what that does is that that builds and that anticipates and that brings curiosity about the players, who they are, where they came from, their background. And that's something that we see here in the uh, U.S. We, we love basketball, uh, but at the same time, when you look at the life of LeBron, Kobe Bryant, uh, the, you know, God rest his soul, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, some of these guys, it's not just that we see them on the TV in the game. We have a chance to, to know a little bit about their um, lives. And as we're watching some of these things and it's being shown on uh, TV, what happens is that there's commercials. So there's companies that are going out and say, hey, you know what? I want to sponsor this team. I want to do certain uh, things with these uh, teams. So I think there's an opportunity there. Uh, where What I think to George Lobo's point is that I think our government have to maybe look at this and see how they can create uh, a more stronger or uh, structured uh, framework that makes it easier and that makes it palatable. Having, having the incident like this take place, uh, which sometimes does happen, right? You get overpassionate about something, but um, you know, um, I'm more concerned with, with the, um, idea that we have to have a healthy respect for authority. And uh, we saw the game. I watched that play at the very end. And the referee had a good call. Uh, it was a good call. It was unfortunate. Uh, but sometimes we have to, as a people, learn that sports is about learning to uh, live sometimes with decisions uh, that we may not like. And so that's very important. To Morris point, uh, I remember when the playgrounds were being built during uh, President Sirleaf's time, like the Nancy Doe playground that was being built and some of the other things that were being built. And it was just beautiful when they were done. Fast forward to 2014, uh, I went back to Liberia and I was looking and these things had no maintenance. It's as if uh, in Liberia, we love to uh, build things, but we don't factor in maintenance budget. This is not just the playground. This is also the NEC, the National Election Commission. Uh, I was there when it was first completed. And when you go back to look at that, man, it's, uh, it's not a very pretty sight. So we have to look at these things uh, in terms of building is good, but maintenance is also critical. And in terms of sports-wise, you know, definitely – uh, football, uh, we should look to build stadiums. Maybe that's something that the private sector can kind of engage in if the government enables them to. Uh, but yeah, sports is a unity. I mean, Lakers, Clippers, you know, we don't like it. One team loses the beat, but we have something commonality that we can talk about. And I think then if somebody is going to come and they're going to say that you're accusing us that sports because you used the uh, term dead. You want the other team to be dead. So you might want to clarify that so people don't think that you're trying to incite something bigger. <laughs> okay, I'll clarify. That's a, that's a, that doesn't make any fake gun, but 
Here's he the thing, now, uh, Alex. I hope you got your your audio. Yeah, I'm good. Oh, okay. yeah, I'm good. Yeah, right. yeah. So, so, I'm so here, here, oh. here, what do we see when uh, when sports come in, like the Super Bowl now? Yeah, millions and millions they're going to make out of uh, their sport jerseys, selling stuff pertaining to the Super Bowl. We don't see that in Liberia. And uh, yes, government leadership. What we see is uh, what I see most of the time is everybody going their own little corner. It's become highly politicized. And even from the, uh, from history, I understood that uh, President Totmo set this up simply because he wanted the, uh, the support from the interior. He, he, that was his way of uh, bringing indigenous Liberia into the fold because uh, Totmo himself came to power uh, without the support of his party. So that's how he managed to add indigenous librarians to even vote. So part of the plan was to even do this also through sports so that it will come and basically for entertainment and for the years that follow, what we saw of sports were not good. We call them grown-up people, you know. Nothing, it was not until the likes of George, we are now president, Salenza, and all these people started going professional before people realized that indeed sports we can make money. But on the local level, we are not making money. It's all, we've gone so much about tribes. The reason why the tension came on the field because even outside the field, those things were predicted or they were spoken about that it was not gonna be fair. But I think we focus all on these things because the economic side is completely missing. Uh, Alex, Let me let me let me give something here to Denise Officer Dennis real quick on this, on the issue of the of the of the economic side. Uh, first and foremost, you know, you cannot discuss economics and leave government outside when it pertains to a country. You see, in the business world, when they say the government is responsible to create an enabling environment, what is that environment, Dennis? The government must identify opportunities to expand and grow the economy. The government must first and foremost be able to say that we could use sport as a means to expand the economy. We could use sport to expand our revenue base. How? Now that is where government must bring in technocrats, people who can be able to say, I mean, let, let's take this on a broader context, Eric. You have in every concession agreement, there's a social corporate responsibility component of it. So we know that ASEA Minta is supposed to get Nimba a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. What would happen if the government was transparent and honest and the people of Ganta said that this year, our one million that will be given to us if the government was heavily focused on decentralization mm -hmm. and say we are going to build a stadium in Senegalese so that Nima will host the Ganta meeting in the next two years. So, what happened in the government? You have to create those type of conditions. Mr. But overall, the government believes that for sport in Liberia, it is something where we find to just relax. Some of the countries you listed, people taking it to a whole different level. People see it as a marketing opportunity, as a means of wealth creation. In Liberia, for us, sport is not about wealth creation. We do not believe in it. We see sports as something that we use for fun. Other people take it to a different level. It is like farming. People in Liberia engage in substantive farming. People are now farming to the higher level. People are now industrializing agriculture to export those things. So if you want to make sports something to benefit from, you must first make the initial investment. You cannot discuss the, the, the return on the investment that you have not made. So it's for us to be sitting here and talking about how much money we can make, what the opportunity will be. We first have to be able to say, you know what, who our national government say, you know what, we are going to take sports as a means of investment. We are going to decentralize everything and begin to, to make profit. Mr. Lobo, I'm not, I'm, I'm not making any excuse for government, but government after government, this has not happened. So what I'm focusing on now is what are the opportunities? What can we do? And so let, let me let me bring uh, Alex. Okay, go ahead, Morris. Okay, Charles. Uh, uh, yeah, Morris, you see, <laughs> uh, it's sad that uh, my comrade will come here and want to throw the government under the bus on the issue of sport development in the country. Sometimes we got to go to the history of some of these things that 
you know, we we are experiencing today. The fact that the issue of the foundation, we talk about economic development, we have the foundation, we have the institution, you know, in play. But some of the things have been lacking over 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 decades in our country. Today is good thing that we can come over here and discuss it, and we make recommendations to the government. But they want to throw the government under the bus aside. And on the issue of sport development, it is good that we commercialize sport because it will help to increase the revenue envelope. How? One of the, one of the way we can do it is, and we we like we move the we move the, the final march to to from county to county, because when when the final when the final march they play in Nima, the issue of economic activity in that period will start to boom. Like the what happened with, with the the Super Bowl, it goes from states to states. When it comes to Minnesota, economic activity in Minneapolis, there were new hotel con constructed, and a lot of things happened. The revenue boom for that for that period. So and, and, and businesses that that, that 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 got established when the Super Bowl came to Minnesota, those businesses as existing and, 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 and adding value to the, the economies of Minnesota. And the what we can do here is. The, the final mark, we shouldn't concentrate everything in Montserrat. Our, our, our challenges in developing our uh, uh, economy is we focus everything in Montserrat. So it makes the revenue envelope very narrow. But when we, as, when we try to expand our activities, if we take the content meter, the final in Sanu Koli, the in Sanu Koli, okay, let's say every country will be who hosting it this year. So when they go to a bid and the country that wins to host that content meet, it means that the government. Can, can 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 put some money into what, what they already the county can generate as a county and then the government can can you, you see businesses will start going over there building hotels opening stores to host people so that'll be a big event happening within our county you see the revenue of that county the economic activity of that county will, 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 will increase the businesses that will move there just because the county meet those businesses will remain there and and, and the revenue of that county, the revenue envelope of that county will increase. I wonder what we can do it. Thank, thank you. Did let you say government? In. Did I hear you pronounce the word government two times? Oh, hold on, hold on. Let me bring. Did you Alex pronounce the word government two times? Alex, I just want you to repeat. No, no, no. Let me continue. I'm listening. No, no, no. no, no. But when you guys are, are, are on the, we on the water cooler. You're trying to heat the water up. Alex, Yo, well, let Alex talk now. Alex, I want to bring you in. <laughs> okay, Dennis. Eddie was not hearing What's the question? The question? The, question? The, the question here is, what are some of the opportunities out there? The, we are discussing the economics of sports as our water cooler. How can we make money from the counter meet? Because it looks like the economic and business aspect are absent. That's why we are focusing on tribes and all kind of other nonsense that are not supposed to be part of the counter meet. Well, thank you. You just you just uh, use my my most frequent word uh, nonsense, that, and that's what's going on in Liberia. Pressure. That's what's going on in Liberia. We say we have economic policy, and the major thing that first of all you have was fifty percent of Liberians uh, under the age of uh, fifty years old. Okay, so you have a very young population that are heavily involved in sports, uh, enthusiasts, and yet the most viable way in, in order to encourage these young people and to generate economic activity would be through sports, especially uh, counties, uh, inter-county leagues and, and sports teams. And instead of that, we go to the World Bank with a bowl and begging for money. We go to the IMF and begging for money. And then we hear my brother, Mr. Samuel Jackson, talking about how smart and how brilliant we are. It sounds like stupidity to me because every county in Liberia should have a stadium. Even if it's a pitch, we'll know, you know, if people have to take their chairs, that we'll go on the beaches in America and take our folding chairs. Nothing's wrong with that. You start from somewhere. But county league should not be played in, in, in Morovia. And county league should be about the economic development of the people and the players. So when you bring it into where it's a political thing, like you said, Todmore and now we are, and I expect better from Mr. We are because he's a sports enthusiast. He's a player. Okay, maybe Ellen, I would say, you know, she's behind the times and, you know, she doesn't have, she's not caught up with current events. But for Georgia, I would expect that when you saw in Europe, in France, with a different team, Marcel, 
uh, uh, PSG, that the first thing on his agenda would be, you know what, let's have a diversified league. Let me, let me work hard to put a team in every county. That can generate tens of millions of dollars. And you can use those same stadiums for concert. You can use it for political rallies for those people who like politics. And you can, you can implore people. So why is it that, you know, like, you know, I, I really don't get it when we talk about economics and finance in, in Liberia uh, uh, context. Because basically what we're talking about is politics. I mean, this is an easy common thing. Nobody disagrees that people uh, should invest in sports in Liberia. Nobody disagrees that every county should have a stadium or the game should be rotated. So what's there to discuss? I mean, it's just foolishness to me that, you know, uh, that we can't, you know, facet the common sense to say this is something that we can benefit on. And that's all the government, including the current one. And so what's the excuse? You know, I, I hope they'll be able to explain themselves, but, you know, it's just frustrating that the most basic thing, if Liberia had a sports team in at least every region, not in every country, but let's say we have four sports teams, okay? Uh, 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 so Eastern, Northern, Western, you know, uh, uh, and, and the Eastern portion, and teams can move and play against each other. We're all just predicating it on, 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 on county, because when you bring county, I agree with you, Dennis, you bring tribalism. In America, anybody can be a team. I, I live in Florida, my, but my team could be LA Clippers or Detroit, Detroit me, I mean, uh, the, what do you call it? Detroit Pistons. But in Liberia, you put it on a county, you put it on a, on a, you know, it's more of a tribalistic thing. And that's not what sports is meant to be. And like I said, I would expect the George Weah administration of all administration to lead the way in that. And it's disgraceful that so far they had no plan, no plan on the table as of today to say, we're going to diversify sports and we're going to use it to help our young people get jobs. We're gonna use it to help our young people, you know, uh, uh, showcase their talents to the world. We're gonna use it to develop the different counties. And instead of that, we went into IMF. We went into, you know, we're traveling to where, wherever, France. France has things in every, con in every, every, every uh, region. The Premier League, the European League, I would say, you know, the, Spain, all these countries. So why Liberia cannot do that? If a government cannot do that, it loses, to me, the essence of even being government because the point of being government is to solve problems. And this is a problem that's already solvable and you can't even do that. Right. And, and uh, Mr. Lobo, they say every government is a representation of us. Even we as yes. a people, that's not how we are thinking. I, I know you put all the burden on the government to do it, but take Sino County, for instance, what are we doing to support our team and sustain it to the other counter meet? No, Dennis. Mm -hmm. Dennis, Dennis, here's why you got to understand when I talk about government, right? If you talk about Sano County, if we put a structure in place, right, for example, one of the reasons that for, when, when Ellen brought up the, the county development fund component of the budget, and, and I did, I, that was something let me, that I appreciate that highly. No, I, I, I don't appreciate that at all. No, yes. let, but, you, but now, let me finish my but position. No, you, you I just want to get before I forget, but that's another discussion. Because the whole idea of the counter development fund was just dividing money. <laughs> <money. laughs> <laughs> we are not discussing what happened to it. We'll get to that. Let me finish that. Now, mm -hmm. what I taught Alex was that uh, the reason why I embraced that idea was I wanted county, county officials to be able to take that money and use it for programs that would develop the county. That was my, that's why I appreciated that initiative. Now we can discuss how was the program, right? How was the money being disbursed? What happened to the money? We can talk about that. But let's first and foremost to that county development fund. Like I said, uh, my brother said it, uh, it was bad that I called government, but he mentioned government. Now, when we talk about these things, Alex, sometimes the county might not have the money. Let's say Nima wants to build a stadium, right? And the stadium might cost $1.5 billion. 
but the people of Nima were able to raise 750 thousand. Now, if we have a government that has an investment bank that will offer low interest rate to its people, then the Nima county can come to the government to that investment bank, like LBDI should have been. That was the intention for LBDI. Now, the people of Nima can come to LBDI and borrow at 75 uh, 750 thousand to add to that 750 thousand, which gave them the 1.5 million. And build a stadium because they want to host the country. Meet. So government plays a pivotal role in everything, folks. It's not, you can't take it out. Now, the reason why we call it on this government now, we are saying this man was not an engineer. This man was not a scientist. This man is the greatest soccer player. This is a soccer icon. We believe that if anybody will use sport to generate the maximum amount of return on that investment, it should be this guy. So I don't know how you want us to have this type of conversation. My, my, my dear friend and brother said, or oh, I saw Mr. Lobo wants to put the government on the bus, but then he talked about government. That's why I asked him, did I hear you say government? And then there's another thing you must understand. When we have these sporting activities, don't forget now, the government have to provide security for those people. So if something went wrong, it is the government. What happened to the hospitals? The government must make sure there's a hospital that is functioning nearby. If something happened to somebody, they can take the person there. So the condition for these things to happen, the government plays a pivotal role. But overall, we first need a government that is that is ready, that understands and sees it as an opportunity and sees it as a means of generating revenue, and then they can invest in it. Thank because you. I believe that every county now should begin to work towards establishing some type of club. And then the people you talk about selling paraphernalia. Yes, I saw people buying Lofa jerseys, people buying this. Who knows if you establish a team in Lofa, maybe Lofiers in the diaspora can decide, say, you know what, we want to pay into that account. That what we talk about. If LBDI was really smart and the National Investment Commission was wise, create an investment account. Maybe Liberians in the diaspora so more can say, you know what, Melo we don't have money to let's say build bridges. But I can call four or five friends and say, gentlemen, you know what? I think we can establish a team in Nima. How much would it cost us to support a team? Maybe bring four or five person here and raise two, three hundred thousand go to Liberia and establish a team. But we need a bank that will put money there. Remember, we're not, we're not gonna live with data to borrow money. We can't put money there for our players and they can't get paid. So these things are very, very important. So the condition must be created by the government for these things to happen. And that is my position. I, I guess, Mr. Lopo, I just want to qualify one point. Yes, I did say that if any government uh, were to invest in sports, it would be the, we are going because, again, he brings a lot of sports um, experience, sports recognition. But that does not excuse the Liberty Party government. Liberty, a government job is Party to provide government. jobs. You, sorry, the United Party government, excuse me. Uh, there's no excuse for them either. They were there for no. 12 years. They should have, they, they had millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars in aid. They could have just written a proposal and say, instead of paying MRI Corner $15,000 and paying for all these travel trips, let's invest in a different, these different counties. They're opening a state, a small stadium, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars stadium, like Anthony Tubman Stadium, something like that. They didn't do that, okay? But they were traveling all around the world, going to every conferences. So again, that's what I'm saying. Our leaders are a disgrace. It's a disgrace. They, these are opportunities. There are a lot of young people in Liberia looking for opportunities. Are talented, and we sit here and we talk politics and we talk about oh. Who's going to win the next election? Why wouldn't the political parties today have a plan for sports? Name one person in Liberia that has even mentioned any, any opportunity in sports. How can you run a country? Liberia has one of, the, one, one of the, uh, the highest amount of youth population in the world. I think 19% or something, uh, 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 19 years old and younger, it's one of the highest percentage. 40 or 70 percent more. Between the age of 15 to 35. Correct. They are about 50 percent of the population. Right. Over 50 percent of the population. What are these people supposed to do? Even if you can't employ them, create a talent. They can go to the Olympics. You can have tennis. You can have swimming. You can have all these facilities. So again, 
every government in Liberia has failed the Liberian people so miserably. And it's unfortunate. So I'm guessing, I mean, yes, we are government, our previous government failure shouldn't be your failure. But again, there's no excuse. Right. And because it, it could generate revenue. That's the cool thing about it. You have a budget that over $70 million of the budget is funded by foreign, one of the twelve 12 years were funded by foreign, foreign or, or government. You can't even support your own budget. You can't even meet your budget. Okay, and, 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 Alex, and then you're traveling and doing all these things. Alex, that's why Go I ahead. want us to look at this in a holistic manner and uh, suggest mm -hmm. ways so that that can be used so that we look at the business side of sport and not just the entertainment. Or WhatsApp, WhatsApp, uh, my, my brother and I we were teenagers when we started FC Juveniles in Bannersville. We we're about to go to uh, the fourth division when the when the uh, when when hostel when the war came. I mean when when they were the 92 or uh, octopus. WhatsApp, let's say the Grand Jury Association in America for supporting their team and sustaining it even after the county need or making people to start thinking more about commercializing this, about, you know, the, uh, you, you, I mean, all of us are aware that most, all the teams in America, the uh, New England Patriots, from all the states, they are owned by individuals, even though they stay in the country and based on their business, they say, okay, we are moving from Los Angeles, we are going to St. Louis or vice versa. It's all business. Why nobody's investing in that? So let me bring you in, uh, uh, William, to conclude on this. Water cooler, and I have, it looks like so, there are callers who want to participate. So William, and uh, one more thing. So, we don't expect, not because uh, George, we are playing football, so he will know how to manage football. That's where people come in with the expertise to do these things. You could be a footballer and have zero understanding of commercializing the sporting business. So what do what can we do? What uh, what are some of the suggestions or what are some of the ways, the creative ways we can bring about so that we can maximize the economics and the business part of sports? Uh, William. Thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, you know, the last time we were we were here, we didn't make some, you know, mention some of the comments from some of the folks that are watching us. So just want to say uh, from Emmanuel A. Payne, he says, how can you blame the president or government for a team or playing who, for a team or player who walked off the pitch? Fitz Boris Freeman, he said to reply to Emmanuel, dude, keep quiet. This is not about your God or president. You guys always ready to attack anyone who mentioned anything about the government. Further down, we also have Abraham Malobe, he says, I believe this is a great start for Liberia and all Liberians. Every good thing must start from somewhere and every good thing will have its up and down. Liberians need to uh, come together and learn how to build upon what we have in Liberia. Everything cannot be government. The Liberian people and Liberia private sector needs to be activated to see real growth. Many Liberians are talking about. The one question is what are you doing and how can we make it better? Good, thank you. Another one, Wilma Pin said, thank God for the first time I am hearing from a sedition. I don't know what that was referring to, but okay. We'll, he also says, is there a number to call in? So I believe Dennis, maybe he may have called in, have, we have him waiting. Okay. From Rosalind with Neil. This is, that is when the roads come into place. You don't have good roads and you want to complain about county meat, county to be held in Morovia. These are some of the reasons the president's concern is all good roads. So give the president a chance. Next one is uh, Dave Job. Last one. Read, read the last comment so I can bring in colors. Okay, the last one. Monserrato can hold since it has the population and facilities that has been a financial benefit over the years. That requires proper management and depoliticized. De I think he meant depoliticization. What about sharing the revenue after the tournament? So that was Dave Ja uh, comment. So go ahead, uh, Dennis. Uh, for those who didn't catch, we'll catch you again another time. Let's get a couple of callers, then we're going to move to our topic of the day because the water is hot. We can't call that thing water cooler moment anymore. <laughs> 
we, we have a call on the line. Uh, we, we didn't want you guys to be part of our water cooler, but you, you're in here already. So Stanley George, go ahead. Your questions are coming. Thank you very much for uh, the invite in a way. You know, I get sick sometimes when we were sitting in this country in America or whatever part of the world, and we try to blame the government on every aspect of the country development, the economy, and everything. But yet is the, the whole issue. We all here in America, the great UPS today that great families, a lot of Americans work for, immigrants, is started by a just a private citizen, 1907, a 19 years old boy, used 100 United States dollars, he borrowed it from his friend, 100 United States dollars. Because at the time he was a messenger boy carrying milk around. When the need, when 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 it increased, when 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 milk started to increase and they needed more people to work in that area, he decided to, to borrow hundred United States dollars for his friend. And today you have a multi-million dollar company mm -hmm. for a 19 year old boy. But we were sick in the country and we want to blame the government for everything, for creating a job for putting food on our table, for buying mm. everything for us in the house, with everything for us. Why are we doing this to ourselves? Den Dennis, we have the best Dennis. brain. We have the money. Dennis, St Stella, can you keep that call on the line? I think he makes a very good point. Out, and yeah. can we engage him a little bit? We right. saw the economics, so I have a question for him. Stanley, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, you, you, okay. what you are saying is okay. interesting. So we, we what, what the, so, we, you, we have questions for you. The, the first question is, people are talking about the government creating the environment so that a 19-year-old boy okay. can be able to start his own business. Is the environment that they are talking about, is it good enough for business? Okay, I will say this. When this president took over, he invited the diaspora Liberians who want to create, who want to help in the government to create business or to to, to, to be Mr. able to, 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 Mr. to, to, to help Mr. George, the economy. Mr. How many of those are uh, diaspora Liberians? Mr. George, Mr. George, that opportunity? Mr. George yeah. I don't want us to focus on any right. specific president before we get sidetracked. Is the okay, thank you. environment All right, thank you. Anyway. Is the enabling environment being created? That's the role of the government. I want to start my business. Yes, I would say yes. My hometown, Dudwick, and how can I get there when the road is cut off? So he just said yes, Dennis. Okay. He said yes. yes. So let me let the yes. people answer. The man said the government is the government. The government has created the environment. So Stanley, go ahead. Okay. Is there any question or have not, uh, not question, yet answered this question? question or? Uh, two questions I have. Uh, first of all, again, uh, do you support this current government? What is your political affiliation? Okay, I support the present government as, as a citizen of Liberia. Okay, well, What's that's the next fine. No, 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 that's fine. Because again, you know, I, I think uh, it's clear, I mean, we have to disclose where our, our political views are. All right, secondly, your, your, your contention or your point is that, you know, Liberians mm -hmm. should be the one to lead business, like the 19 year old boy, like Steve Jobs, like all these all these uh, entrepreneurs in America and you. I totally agree with you. But in 1903 in America, America had one of the biggest boom. That was coming all of, all of, all of, all of the 1890 economic reform in America. In fact, that boom lasted okay. by the government, okay, through grants, through programs. That was when Henry Ford started at the same time Henry Ford started the Ford Motor Company, which most of it was giving most of the uh, the technology and the, and the and the grants were given by the government to to the build the industry the car industry in America because Europe already had a I car industry. So again, I'm not. So we're not saying here that you know the government should shoulder mm -hmm. all of the burdens. Okay, what we're saying that the government has to provide an environment, an economic environment. Currently in Liberia, the interest rate is above fourteen percent. Okay, if you study economics or finance, it's impossible. If that fourteen-year-old boy was in Africa, he would not be able to survive and build UPS to what it is. 
because the rate will be too high. So what government do in these countries, they give low interest rates, right, through the central bank to people who want to invest in business and hire people. It's called tax breaks. So our government doesn't do any of that. I have tried to start business in Liberia, and many other people have tried to start business in Liberia. It's more difficult because you're paying a very high interest rate. The currency is not stable, all right? And the government provides no grant. Show me one grant that a real government has issued for people who want to start business. And I will agree with you 100%. So please tell me what, what the grant, right, for business, for people who want to invest in sports in Liberia, that the real government over the last two years uh, has, has made a bit more. Are you saying sport or are you saying where in the government to build a capital efficient environment? Okay, so uh -huh. the civic club we're talking about sports today. Okay. So I was saying okay. You see uh 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 okay. So you see, uh, 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 I will even expand that where uh, if I wanted to open a business, is, is let me just finish my let, question that you can ask so you, so you understand my total question. Yeah. Okay, Stand go ahead. Go ahead. We, we, we got another caller to bring in. No, but Dennis, I got a question oh, for him. Let me say this to Alex. 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 Yeah. Alex. Yeah, I'm listening. Alex, I want to say this. But upon a correction, I want to say correction, but I want to say this from the sample. Cool. What I was uh, uh, speaking on is specific on, on, on this guy that created as UPS. He did not, he, he never went to, to get any grant for any government or, or any bank. He, he took the money from a friend, a friend. He never went to the bank or to, to, to any place to go get money beside his friend. And all the, all the fund of the United States dollars today, we have a multi-million company here. Okay, yeah, but so, me, so I'm not saying that government cannot be taken. Let me let me let me come in there with one quick question here to, to lay this to rest, real yeah. quick. Let me put this, this to rest. This is very brief. Bring another yeah. call on you. Okay. Uh, um uh, George, you said that the government invited Liberians from the diaspora and they didn't show up. Uh yes. the same old government told yes. us that Liberians would not be participants in the economy. Is that right? Uh, what, can you name me three Liberian businesses that have been awarded the license? Let me finish. To, to import rice, cement. Apart from that, do you know the story of Moloba Yoko? He's a young man, a young Liberian who is in Liberia, a man who opened Renaissance business. He was in the government. He got fired because he supported the Unity Party. Do you know what have happened to his business under this government? So if you if you ever to tell us what happened there, now I think any Liberian living in the diaspora should look at that and tell whether that that, that country under George is safe for you to invite, especially when you're not from the CBC. So when Alex asks about the environment, those are the things you should tell us. Mm. We saw people protesting because you will own 20% stake in Gunstar. So is that the environment you're talking about that the government has created for us to go invest? You see, uh, uh, you see, Mr. Noel, I will say this. Whatever allegation now you are alluding to, I cannot speak to that because okay. it is an allegation. They have not gone through the yeah. proper court or court proceeding and coming out with those things you are talking about. So it's an allegation. So I cannot address an allegation that you are speaking of right now. Okay. When it comes to that, when it comes to that individual you are talking about, that Liberian. Okay? But it's Oh, I don't want to take most of the most of the time anyway. We got another caller anyway. So thank you for the time. Yeah, but you know, thank you for your participation. No, no, no. And Dennis, let the let the guy finish. Don't worry about the other caller, please. We want to hear what you have to say, brother. Please finish it, please. No, no he's gone. Another caller, call out your name and where you calling from. We can't waste time on this one thing. Go ahead, call Yeah, out. yeah. This is Cyrus calling. This is Cyrus calling from Minneapolis. Cyrus, your phone name. Cyrus Power from Minneapolis. Cyrus, go ahead. Thank you for joining. Yeah, I mean, I'm in the show a little bit. I mean, I was attracted to the show today because I'm a sport lover. I'm a sport fan, especially soccer. I grew up playing soccer, and my brother Alex made a very important point on this on this issue. I mean, just because 
something is an opportunity, it's not a guarantee that it's going to belong. I mean, soccer poses a huge potential revenue-wise. And if you have been following sports in La Brock since 2002, literally our high school, our inter high school league and the national league, like the first division and second division league, they literally collapsed because that momentum for soccer was no longer there after the Lone Star failed to qualify for that Japan and uh, South Korea World Cup of 2002. And coming down the script, it was only the counter me that had resuscitated the game in Liberia. I mean, the counter me, you can see 45,000 people to attend a match. When the IEM Barrow play these days, go go and watch Barcelona and Chelsea. The only thing you can see momentum building from is from the counter me. So it would be a very important sector of the economy that could, that could really boost revenue. For the government, like the brother said, maybe through the form of public private partnership, because you will always need government, even as you got investor. If you want to build stadiums in all the various counties, you need role. You need access to role. You cannot tell me that just because someone's interested in soccer and you got money to invest in terms of go build roads and stadiums. The government must make some down payment, and then people that got resources and capital can take advantage of that. And the thing you fail to realize is. I thought I had another guy talking about the New England Patriots. First of all, sport is leisure activity. You should first have a booming economy where people can take money to go watch a soccer match. If you can't find a regular job and people cannot even get a regular job to put food on the table, nobody's going to go watch a soccer match. So, like the brother said, the one idea that I bought from him is the whole idea that government will make a, some kind of an investment and private people, like people that got excess capital, businesses, you could even do that thing like, like I assume, right? You could, you could, you could structure the league like 20 things. Like the way you get in Spain, you do it by city. Like, like Lofa County, like the, the Nima County, like the Grand Basel County, towns with a huge population. They could have three or four things in the league. You could come up with 20 things and make this thing into a real competitive I can just add to your point, sir. Yes. Me, let me and stay on the line. Stay on the I'll line. I don't mean to interrupt. You make a very good point. I just want to add to your point. Yes, we don't have roads yes. from Monrovia all the way to, let's say, in Maryland. But we do. We can travel from Monrovia mm-hmm. to Banga. We can travel from Monrovia to Pekina, yes. right? We can travel to Monrovia yes. to parts of Liberia. So even if you don't have yes. a stadium in every county, you start from where you Congo, have yes. access now. And then yes. those teams That's can not- play at those stadiums. Right, and then you can improve yep. it over time. No excuse. Over time. Yes, and that's and a smart point. You don't have access to all the six counties. You could drill it down to. Yeah. yeah Four regions. Saras, go, go ahead, Morris. Okay. You see, ja, um, you see, certain one listen to our some of our colleagues discussing our country and the economic issue that we face today. There are a lot of good ideas coming from all fronts. Good suggestions. But let's scale down on the issue of government priorities, considering the, come up, the, the, the current economic status of our country. The fact that there are, a lot of, there are a lot of economic issues that were not put in place from the inception you know, of, the, of the formation of, the, of, of a country. We, we left a lot of things undone. Today, we are demanding too much and the, 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 the revenue is little. The revenue envelope is little. So those ideas are good, but we look at it, we, we, when we look at when we're trying to look at government priorities, priorities, those, some of those ideas, those ideas are long range and, 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 and proposals. It's not even in the first two, three, or, or even second ten of George. Why, why, I'll come why, in. Why, why come in. Long? It's just a question. I mean, this is a discussion forum. So, I mean, why, yeah. I'm asking why. why? Let me, let me, let me respond to this real Let's quick. See. We can't let, let, let this go on. Don't come We will not let this go on. Let me respond to this too. You can't call me off. You can't call me off. You fly. Yeah, hold on, hold on, guys. Go ahead, go ahead. You understand? Because for every plan, it has cost variables. You say something today, you want true. this to happen, it has called variables. That's true. So, then look at what's the source of income. That's true. Let, 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 uh, mm-hmm. La Brava budget are on a five million, five hundred million dollar. Yes. And if you do analysis of our budget from, from, two, from, from 2005, when we first had the first election, 
after the war to today. Our budget, our budget, our, even look at our budget, almost 60% of our budget goes on uh, salaries and benefits. So that constraints. So, so uh, uh, what is the plan? The plan here is the first priority is what we should look at. No, how I mean the plan for sports. What's the sport plan? Uh, uh, Dennis. I come in now. Dennis, let me, let me make this plan. You can have the brother. best sport plan. I come in, you can have the best sport plan. But then look at how do you roll all that plan within the, within the government and priorities? How do you roll all that plan? Okay, understand. How? Okay, I can, tell, I can tell you how. Okay. You want to tell let you me how? respond. Can I, can I respond what to him real quick? Doing? What what the let me respond to him real quick. What, what the government is doing? Do what the government is doing? What the government is doing? The government tried to expand the economy through the world network. Hold on, Mr. Man. Let 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 Lobo ingest something. Lobo, you have one minute. Ingest something. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, Thank uh, thanks to, to Saros for his brilliant idea, and I think Ellis and Saros were in line. Ellis' argument makes sense that where we have accessibility, then let's invest in those areas. Now, I listened to my dear brother trying to tell us that the reason why these things can happen is because the government is on a constraint, which, of course, that is not the fact. If they, if, I don't know how well the brother is alluding to the budget, but I wish he maybe, I don't know if you read the budget, because if you speak on the budget, I mean, you turn this show upside down because your statement don't match what you say. It's complete. It's a contradiction of what the budget reflects. I just want to clarify that. Let me say, let me finish. Don't worry, my brother. I don't end my statement. Let me finish. I will not leave you. I will not finish. I will not end like this. I will make sure I give you what I'm talking about. Just hold on one second. But here's what needs to happen. This is why when I spoke earlier, I said, the government must play a pivotal role in it. You were right when you talk about the government outlining its priorities. I said initially, if the government sees sports as a means of economic development, then the government must prioritize sports. Then that means when you prioritize sports, we will see the reflection in the government's budget because the budget is an estimate of expenditure and income for a set period of time. We will see what has been allotted to sports. Now, to my brother's point that he said the government was on a budgetary constraint, my dear brother, I like to be a professional enough. What I don't like to do is to tell people flat out when they lie that you lie. I would be very cautious to say you gave misleading information. There's in no way you would tell us that the budget was on a budgetary constraint when the president, when Madam Salif's office budget was 15645000 George Weah in 2018 office budget was 21 million. 539,000. So technically, you are not being honest. And I hope when you speak on the budget, you must know the numbers and have the facts to that. So don't call the budget yet. Let's make it clear. Even when it comes to stadiums that were built, those small stadiums that were built were built by Robert Sully as a result of the 10 million that came from the social corporate responsibility from the initial agreement from that oil. So let us not talk about it. We know that more needs to be done. Our argument is clear have a government who inherits country. This is a so-called icon. What have been done to improve sport? How can the government use sport as a means of revenue generation to expand the economy? Don't speak on the budget until we leave this show here. You don't have the numbers. Let us not do that. Thank, thank okay? you, Mr. Lobo. Not... We'll thank, keep it there. Thank you, Mr. Lobo. Here's a budget. Next time. Let, let me bring Let's in my proceed. last caller on this topic. Call out your name and where you're calling from, and then we move on. Hello, caller. Your name and where are you calling from? William, I want you to conclude on the topic and then we move on to our main topic for the day. Thank you. Um, <laughs> gentlemen, listen, this is a uh, uh, very, very interesting because on one side of the fence, we have uh, the heart for Liberia. We want to see Liberia improve. And we see that uh, right now our current administration, they're going out to try to build roads to do certain things. Um, and then also on the other end, we see that uh, you know we need investment capital. 
So um, at the end of the day, which brings us to Loida and the partnership with LBDI, which is something that is very important that I want to talk about. Now, uh, Loida is in Liberia and they're going to pretty much be operating a business unit. They're going to be operating as a business unit uh, at LBDI. So what that means is that um, one of LBDI main goal is to look at <clears throat> how can there be private movement of capital into the uh, Liberian sector and then also uh, how can the system run a little bit more efficiently because uh, Loida, what they do, uh, they do a few things. Number one, they help you raise money for your country for different projects. They help to package certain projects to make sure that it's uh, feasible. And another thing that they uh, do is that they provide, they, they, uh, provide uh, professional banking consulting services uh, in attempt to look at the bank and see how it can run a uh, little bit better and so forth. And in, in addition to that, they have a lot of network and something that most of us we're not talking about, but we've had it on the business forum a little bit that I want our viewers to be mindful of is that um, they also specialize in, in a payment system. So making sure, you know, like here in the US, we have our bank card, we go to buy something, we use our card. So they also have a mechanism in there that uh, ensures that uh, the payment system runs. Now, whether they hired for that at LBDI or not, that's a little different because they're a consultant and fundraising uh, investment firm organization. So it depends in all of the tools they have in the bag, which one we want and which one we do not want. So we talk about investing in Liberia. And the main thing is that, well, look, we know that there are Liberian millionaires. Uh, the question is, uh, are they capable of running an investment bank? We know that Liberians are skills. Have anyone have any experience in the investment banking world to say that we want to run? We know that Alex wrote a paper on uh, some recommendations for the LBDI. And we see that those are some of the things that LBDI has currently implemented. So uh, the question is, well, they took the idea and they implemented it with a company that is not Liberian. How does that make you feel? Now, to, um, to uh, George, one of the things that will be interesting as we speak and as we look at all of these things going on is, um, you know, why in this picture, why I saw on a certain picture that I want to bring to George Lowe's attention is, uh, and maybe you can, you can give some understanding and share some light on this picture because this picture says a lot. And it speaks to certain things that we're going to get a little bit more into in our discussion. Right. So, so I hope I didn't lose anybody. If anybody uh, can. Well, you, got, uh, you got a caller online, uh, Williams, you got uh, women online. He's telling you people that he's online. So if you guys want to let him go or conclude so he can go, he's saying he's on mute. Okay. Women. We, don't, we don't have a, is it, is it Will? William, what is your uh, Wilma, What is your number? Because I called the seven one seven. You didn't. No, he was a guy. He was the last caller who was who was making a point with regards to the Ellis came in, and then I followed. Oh, who said you was Saros? Yes, Saros, right now. He goes by Wilma Billy on Facebook. So. Yeah, let 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 the gentleman finish his um his uh, thought because we want to be courteous to um that. So Dennis, if you're able to please let him do. Uh, I'm sure it it will not take long. And don't worry, guys. I'm I'm bringing up the right document to share. And go ahead, Wilmot. Uh, you said you Wim. Uh, yeah, I just want to I just want to conclude my point. You see, sometimes when you, when you talk about oh, hello. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sometimes when you're talking about a game of soccer, you don't want to politicize it, but some, I mean, it, it's almost impossible to take politics for anything. I remember doing the, the, the 2006, you see, one of the reasons I will hold George Ria solely responsible on this situation, because George has played professional soccer. I'm not going to be under the illusion that because you play soccer, it means that you can manage, but at least he was out there playing soccer for commercial purposes. And there were countless opportunities that happened on George Ria. Watch. 
that he never took advantage of in commercial lands in the whole country himself. If you guys can recall, during the, the, the re-election of Seth Blatter, when they introduced the gold project all over Africa, when the drawback and the Ito and all the guys were taking advantage, where FIFA allocated millions of dollars to every African country to develop a game of soccer from academy to community level. I think Georgia was one of those that was instrumental in Blatter re-election. But he didn't take advantage of that. The same thing happened again with this Arab guy from the UAE of Ben Hamad. When George Yard named Sophie in a morning scandal, where he took, I think, like 47,000 pounds, saying that it was for school fee with the Azeta Wesley and all that stuff. So the opportunity has been presented, and maybe he can resuscitate this school, like I said. But the opportunity has been there, and we hold him to a higher extent because he was the only one, like any person I can recall, that played, I mean, professional sports. So that's my parting comment. Take care, so guys. What, Thank you. What, what's your recommendation that needs to be done for sports? My recommendation is government should make some little bit of investment, make the down payment, make it like a public, I mean, or a public private partnership, invite some librarians that got interest in the, in the game, and see if you can get money from out there. That's all you can do. The company is the best opportunity for the developed soccer because we are not going back to IE and Baru and the LPRC, all of them. You got corporations in Liberia, you got businesses, they can, they can form part of the sponsorship deal. You can make some down payment, like I said, and put some players on salary. I mean, like, it's another way to get people, I mean, a, a, a source of revenue. Because these guys, these soccer players, they go out there, they play. Like, can you imagine for normal days, you would even believe that some of these guys that were playing for the IE and the Baru and the FPRC, they were just mad beggars. You play on the ATS, then you go down, well, you go to a full line mesto, you beg him. But these guys were not on salary because the league was in structure. And, it was in structure and, and, and in a way. And Sarah, that's what I'm speaking to, but it seems that uh, a lot of us are focused on the now. Because this, this plan has not been there. So how do we do it? Yes. Forget Josh Weir, forget that he played. But the whole idea of developing sport, of commercializing it and looking at the economics has never been done. So what do we do now? Yes. Yeah, one way you could do it, like I said, if you structure the league based on the population and size of the county, mm -hmm. you could go to these multinational corporations and local businesses to sponsor. Okay. And then, like I said, you got revenue, you got get intake. I mean, there are so many ways, there are so many options. The government will get businesses tax breaks, and then some certain corporations are certain thing. Like if you're from this country, like you have the Meta Steel, other corporations, like I said, for the St. Gabby. If St. Gabby operates in Grand Cayman County and they got other businesses in Grand Cayman County, you, should, you could get a tax break for them to make some investment in the league. I mean, you just got to be creative. It's not a one way, there's not a one size fit all today, but you to be creative and find other ways to finance the league. So that when people, when players are playing, they are compensated too in the process, and government can expand our revenue base to the Thank country you. because the potential is huge, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wilma. Thank you. Um, one of the William, things. Hold on, William. We got uh, one more, one more caller. Desperately want to talk about this. Is that you, Mr. Depuzuo? Yes, this is the Puzu here. Unfortunately, I cannot come in directly today, but the, the topic, in the, the com commercialization of sports is something that I think we've discussed it before. And I've also discussed it with former minister of uh, even sports, but it seems to be that uh, one of the things that we need to be looking at is uh, what are the current opportunities? And uh, the previous caller just, I think he nailed a lot of things that I should have discussed. So let me just go straight to what is important. I think the, we are having a lot of you know, noise because of the county made, simply because people have decided to make a more political game than commercialization. In fact, what is the, the county made generate more fun, or if I have more uh, or spectator than any, any other league now in Liberia. So what the commercial, in fact, Lone Star, Falcon, the rest of them have done now is to be sponsoring, you know, uh, uh, these, these games and to also help to print tickets. But it is still a problem of management and accountability challenge we still have it. In the sense that government will appropriate certain amount for the county meet, and the county realistically, I would speak from my experience uh, as somebody who supported two counties. I currently live in my GB county, and also from Neymar County. So when any of these schemes are going and they put raising money in the community, you definitely have to give support. And you know the citizens, I would tell you that the citizens can raise more money for the soccer team 
and the, the, county, the county management can go ahead and raise more money. And these money are not actually accounted for. That's the reason why you see most of the players, you see most of the countries have here, those players that you see there, strong players are, are being paid by the countries during the, 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 the league. They will recruit them and pay them, and they will host the team until they get to Morovia. So what is important now is for the, for the government to see this as an opportunity to say, you know what, let's do public-private partnership. Now we can now look for owners. In fact, many people, for example, Nima T, you know, Jungle Water, the man, uh, 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 floor, he can sponsor almost everything, and with some other colleagues like the Nima Robot, the rest of the company there, they will give him money. He says why the company is appropriated from their social development fund. That is that can attract more players. That's the reason why you see them. They're always coming to, to, to town. So what is important here is government will say, you know what? We need to now outsource this thing and make it more a private public partnership project. And President, we have who been a soccer player. Watch all of these games. Look at the best player. And this is the time now that when it's a soccer with who been a soccer player to Canada. You know what? We can identify good player and scout people. And send them abroad. It's another way of creating employment and opportunity for Liberia. Instead of us sitting down and say, you know what, my country and this and that. It's the best time now. No one can do it better than President Weir. I think my previous discussion on Wednesday is that if any of these players turn and take picture of President Weir, that child feels fulfilled <laughs> as a soccer player. And he will fight at all costs to be like President Weir. You can't become world best I'm, I'm and take over as a president and it's time for you. Yeah, if if he if he if he if you have the opportunity now, he should develop sports. Many of the young people now should be focused and say, you know what, I want to be a part of this club. I want to be a part of Bon Kante Club. I want to be a part of Nima Kante Club. Like that, you will see competition. This will not only be a one year. I mean, December uh, a league. It will be an annual league that will raise more money in the various countries because right now they got four regions. They got regions, you know. People who play for Mima, they got one yeah, yeah. yeah, no, hold on, hold on, Alex. Let Mr. Zuo hold on a little bit. He, he was supposed to be here, he's not here. So let's suffer in small. <laughs> Mr. Zuo, uh, yeah, there's, I agree. there's another caller who is complaining. So let me bring on that caller. Caller will be 717 area code. Oh, uh, guess I'm sorry, the callers are enjoying this and let's make them a part of it. Caller, your Please name do. and where you calling from? Hello. Yes, sir. Hello? Hello, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Jim, I'm Jim Zuber. I'm calling from Harris, Pennsylvania. Your name again? James Davis. Oh, calling James. from Harris, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Question or comment? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Uh, even though I've, they have been breaking information because my internet is not working that good. So, but uh, all the people there on the platform are enjoying all the argument and everything. But... The, most of the time, I see a lot of people talking about investment in Liberia, in this one in Liberia. Government is blocking every investment. That'll be true to it. Ourselves, we the local business people that ship continent to Liberia, government is blocking us. So uh, most of the people can say we gotta go invest, we gotta go invest. How do we invest when we are being blocked? Government blocking us. When we, we carry some stuff, you carry continent, they put it on unnecessary fees and tar taxes on the continent. So how do we carry investment in, in Liberia? Mm -hmm. Now there's a, there's a guy that used to ship up to 30, 40 container. Now the guy is going through Guinea. That Guinea is getting that money. Now he's encouraging all of us going through Guinea. And we'll take our container, we'll pay 12,000 to Liberia. We only pay 6,000 from Guinea all the way to Liberia, from, from America, Guinea all the way to Liberia, 6,000. So we get half of the, the stock. So which one do we want to, we're going to follow? Everybody following Guinea. Of course. Guinea is cheaper. And Liberia government can open the port for all the things where Guinea government open it for all. You will see more continent will go, more revenue will be there. But how how do they raise revenue? They're talking about they want to invest, they want they want to do they want they want to do they want when they're blocking they're blocking all businesses from going to Liberia because of our hard duties and all kind of illegal fees. Now the shipping company they not increase it and, and the other day the broker association were together, they were calling on president. We are they say president, we don't want to listen to them. As compared to <laughs> Ellie Johnson, Ellie Johnson is to listen to them. But now, President, we don't want to listen to them. Okay, James. And some of, some of those now, they, they, uh, they don't yeah, care yeah, what, yeah. how you pay. They don't care. James, so the government is blocking man. investment. Morris, Morris, you support the government. It's, it's no secret. The government blocking everybody. That's what they are saying. <laughs> uh, 
I think I don't I don't I don't want to body a section and I just want to make the uh, party. I don't, know that. I, you know, I don't want to reduce a platform to party politics discussion. No, no, I know, but but most of your yeah, uh, government leaders. Uh, Boy, you become a politician now. I wow, you become a politician big time. Oh, <laughs> so, uh, uh, I will have your opinion. Oh, right so, <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I want us to look at it from from a professional standpoint. Why? In the way it is, and look, let me make you to understand something. Oh, and the taxes in in Liberia is is high, it's very high, and tax does not grow econ tax, tax does not grow economy. Okay, but, but it's an inherited constraint. It's an inherited. Yeah, there goes another lie. There goes another lie. Hold on, Lobo, you were, you were coming. Go ahead. <laughs> It's an inherited constraint. You know, our, our economy is, is an abstracted in, 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 in economy. Oh. Everything, <laughs> everything we 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 are consuming it comes from overseas, and all our natural resources is so overseas, and those resources are lost by economic value. So now the government is heavily re relying on the, the, the taxes on the book, and the cost of sustaining the government is very high. And that, that's an inherited constraint. That's something that the government is working on. And one of the things we alleviate and uh, um, do constraint is to localize the economy, wherein we, that uh, what the government is prioritizing the rural project to expand the economy. When you expand the economy, you will get more people paying taxes because you already create revenue activities within the rural counties. So as uh, when, when you expand the revenue revenue envelope, when government when more people are paying. Then the government can see how better they can reduce the taxes. I know it's an inherited constraint and it's a challenge that everybody goes through. But we just need to be patient and see how better we can resolve some of these issues. Can I ask my question, sir? Yeah. Let me respond with okay, go ahead. I want to respond to my dear brother. Okay, so there's two questions I have, one for Mr. Zuo and one for Mr. May. Okay. So I'll ask Mr. Zuo the first question. Okay. He talked about how the government can invest in sports and all that good stuff. But I did not see anything in the pro pro plan, which he, one of the authors of, talk about sports investment. That's his question, why not? The question for Mr. Mayor huh? here is that the government is heavily relying on the extractive industry and it's a banana republic. I agree with you. If that's the case, then energy to leave, then, then the opposition CDC should not have been an opposition issue, I just joined Ellie Jones Ali because the same situation that George Weah has right now that you are defending, that was the same situation Ellie Jones Ali had. So no. why would you guys on one side criticize when you're not in power, but then when you're in power, you're going to like bring people now to understand that there are challenges. So the intelligence did not have these same challenges. No, so Alex, I disagree. Wow, Alex, disagree so you are a serious football player. You just scored some plenty of goals, huh? Alex, Alex you now score serious goals, my man. You, you number nine? Alex, Are you number nine, Alex? Alex? Can I respond to Alex? Can I respond to Alex? No, that's what it means as well. But here's the that. poor poor plan. The poor poor plan is supposed to be a roadmap for development growth in Liberia. I read the poor poor plan. I did not see one line in it for football and sports in Liberia. So this is one of the also I'm coming. of the poor poor plan. So could you tell me why not? Okay, I will answer all two questions before I leave, though. This is the pool. Alex, the plan, the plan as always, I know I'm in a position, and I don't want to, to appear as advocate or someone who defend the government. As a, as a professional, I did a piece of job, and not every part of it is actually I, I, I can take credit for it. But the thing about it is that the youth development program, including soccer, technical, vocational, everything included in the plan. You don't expect go to youth development, so be on, on, on uh, pillow one. It's pillow one. On pillow one, hold on. Go keep going. Let me talk. I'll go there yeah, for you. I'm, I'm coming. Lobo, you can go there. Youth development. <laughs> so, youth development encompasses sports, technical, vocational, everything. You don't expect the plan to be detailed in country meet and this and that. What is Why not? It's important. an economic. It's an economic. And, and I will I take exception I'm, to that, sir. I'll give you the chance. I'll give you the chance. Am I not going to be protected? 
Let me let me clarify my question. When, can I speak? I was supposed to respond. I, I promise. Am I not protected to respond? Hello? Depo, you are. We muted Alex. So go ahead and respond. Ah, we muted right. Alex. Thank you. Yes. Good. Because the thing about it is that Alex keeps talking about Popo Plan. The first thing that there is that if you look at this company, they have been a lot of recommendations written besides the Popo Plan to make sure that this thing is commercialized. One of the best opportunities that is there is to see one of the youth development, which includes the sports and TVET program, is to ensure that it's decentralized, that you have a talent that will be coming from various countries. One thing that is there clearly, we have, have, have discussed it with ministers and self, is that you have a government appropriation made for country needs. Instead of this money, your bank kept in the in budget and be giving it to country and they go and do all their preparation, which is not even just sufficient. The best thing to do is to ensure that, okay, this money should be given to a private venture or public-private partnership, in, individual or banks or institution that have, like, orders. LPRC got orders, but it's not, it's not functional because they don't have money. But you need to give it an individual that manages it very well and make sure that these teams are stronger, are prepared, and come to town. And the players will be in a position Every game, they will have to give commission and actually salary for players throughout the year. It's more an investment. It's the incentive for continuity as well. So it's not something that you have to say because of popo. That's what I'm saying. That even right now, as we speak, President Weir is in the best position in Minister Zoga Wilson. can use their experience. For me, I can say that because I know for the world that as a winter came to Liberia, just to see President Weir. If you, you have you have you have a, a country meet and you have a finalist coming up and you bring international export of sports. Well, that was not a question I asked you, Mr. Moderator. I asked him Auto, that Automatically you have opportunity to fetch our players to make money out of that. I think I think so I think you're going let me let me bring this in house. <laughs> Mr. Like, Moderator, Mr. Now, Moderator, now, let me, I asked the man a specific question. Can I speak on this issue? Okay, well, I'm playing, playing, I want to clarify. Yeah, but we are playing hardball here, George. So what's going no, on is that Alex asked question. two questions. Alex right, asked no, two no, questions. No, so George, please no, wait, no, gentlemen, let's get orders. Let's get orders. Alex, please repeat your question. Please repeat your question for Depo. No, he already answered the question. He agrees with me that in the poor poor plan, there was nothing allocated for sports economics. He talks about youth and sports. Sports is not about youth. You don't look at the PSG and say that's a youth program. So first of all, these people collected money from the government that bring people to write a plan for development. And the number one thing in the country that could spark economic development, they did not even mention it. So thank you for your for your answer. Let me go to the next gentleman, Mr. Man. Right? I, I would keep agree with you on that. Yeah, I would correct would agree on that. Having strength based on export, import, and all this other stuff. Right? If that's the case, then why did the CDC so vigorously criticize the ad administration of Ellie Johnson for 12 years, ran against her, right? When these are the same challenges she faced, that like, did not have a manufacturing when she came to power, that brother did not have any kind of, or, or any other production and exports. Maurice, go ahead, answer the question. Maurice. Okay, Ellis, and the, 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 the economic scenarios between the Ellen administration and the Weas administration are extremely different. Under the Ellen's administration, there were foreign direct investment in the country. There were a lot of resources pulled into the country. So mm. you, 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 uh, do, those resources that came in the country as a result of foreign direct invest, investment and other international uh, organizations operating in the country at the time conceived the constraint. Conceived the constraint. So you couldn't see the constraint. And most of the people on government payroll today were being paid by international community and foreign direct investment. So now those resources are no longer coming. So it creates the financing gap. 
All right, let me save this whole conversation. Let, 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 let them be, let, let me put this oh, together. George, let the man land. Let the man land, then you may agree to disagree. But let the man land. Let him land, George. Let him land. people in a Yes, I'm saying. I'm saying, don't constrain what we see because we are foreign direct, huge foreign direct investment in the country. You have other funds coming in the country by international organization, the UN. A, 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 a other international partner were operating in the country. And most of the people operating government were placed on government payroll today were paid by, 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 by us Thank you. So the, the, the constraint was not visible. Now okay. those resources are no longer around. So the constraint now okay. is visible. Can I respond to his answer now? No, no, let me, let me, actually, let me take this on to your well, part. No, 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 no. I asked a question, he answered the question. I should have a chance to respond. To the answer, then I will turn over to you. Is that fair okay, enough? Go ahead. But now, go ahead. I will address the thing to party policy. Let that let, let, let discuss with other professionals. No, no, I'm not talking about. Go ahead. I want to listen to this. Don't drag it into party politics. Okay, can I have the? Can I be yeah, protected on this? Discuss as a professional. All right. So, Eddie Jones Salib went out there and she procured foreign investment. She went out there and she was able to convince the international community to give Liberia money. She did the job. Why, why George, I can do the same thing. Why he went to France, he went to Saudi Arabia. Why can he go to America, France, the UN, and make the same case that Eddie Johnson made so that Liberia can get assistance? Why not? Is he incompetent to do that? Do the people don't like him? Do they, do they not think that he's qualified, Eddie Johnson is? So I agree with you that Eddie Johnson really got a lot of assistance. But it didn't come down like manner. She went out there and she advocated for it. George Riyadh said he was a better, more new spokesperson. He was more appealing. Why can't he go out there and get $100 million? Why can't he go out there and get, and get a, a peacekeeping forces and say, look, see, our country is still at a critical spot. We still need this help. And why can't he convince the community, international community, Bonoscovi, Italy? Why can't he use his office to do that? He just can. Is it not? Why attracted the foreign direct investment in the country? Because of responsible opposition. We have responsible opposition. People see the environment created to invest. But if you have an opposition that, that, that is created to right, us, let's stop well, Morris, 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 you saying, wow, well, Morris, that's it. a low blow. That's a low let's blow. What you saying is that because the people are protesting, so the people are running away from investing? Yes. Yeah. Morris, Morris, wait, look, Morris, you know, hey, hey, my man, deep down, deep down in your heart of heart. Hey. Okay, George, <laughs> no point George go ahead. <laughs> Let me take this home real quick for us. You know, I, I like I like the I like the passion of my good friend Morris, his willingness to defend the government, but it's a sad one. Uh, defending the indefensible is one of the most difficult tasks you can take on as, as a human. Here's the reality of what happened. Uh, first and foremost, Madam Sally inherited one of the worst conditions of our time. Uh, Madam Sally inherited a country that was referred to as a failed state. Liberia was not a functioning country. All its infrastructure was crumbling, so it destroyed. Our national reserve in 2006 was at $6.5 million. We had a, for, a, a, an international debt of $4.5 billion. So what did Ellen do? You see, it is easier to come on this platform and spill out numbers without understanding the facts about the numbers. Uh, the notion that because Ellen came to power, the world just took the IMF and the World Bank and they opened the door, say, Ellen, go inside and come out anytime with money. That was not how it was happening. And let me make it clear today. Madam Ellen Johnson Salim government did not borrow a cent until 2010 after we met the HIPAA initiative. So for those of you who continue to lie about how much money was taken and this and that, let's get to the facts. Uh, one thing you said today that I want to applaud you for when you admit it, that there are constraints on this government, which is true. The constraints on this government have been created by this government's own inability to govern. Uh, anybody who takes over, I don't know, uh, I mean, you are a professional, you seem to be one, 
uh, with your background, I think you should understand what it means when you inherit an institution. Your job is to transform that institution and make it better. Uh, to sit and tell us that, you know, this is what was happening and this is what I meant, so I'm doing it. That in itself does not slide it that passes the test as a profession because your job is to make it better. Now, you knew as a government coming into power that prior to Ellen leaving office, because of the difficulties we were facing, you know, so the fact that you can't even analyze how we recorded border shortfall in early last three years, that tells me that you are not informed because Madam Sali told us during her last State of the Union address that as a result of the fall in our export, in the price of iron ore and rubber, that decreased our revenue ability. And because of that, we recorded a border shortfall in the tool of 35 to 40 million dollars. So it was on to the CDC government. As a responsible government coming into the power, to put in place measures, to put in place the proper mechanism to cut waste for spending. Because if you know fully well, I defend I define that the, the budget today. That budget is an estimate of expenditure and income for a set period of time. You do not set a budget that you don't have revenue for. That in itself is fraud. This is why the IMF told the CDC government to set a realistic budget. You cannot come into office. I just read the budget for you. If you knew that there were financial constraints, you cannot come to power and increase your office budget by $5 million. You created your own constraints. So to have my brother sitting here today and want to tell us that something happened over there, it's not true. When you came to power, you met a wage bill of $296 million. You came to power and increased the wage bill to $326 million. So what are you telling us today again? Thank you. It is your own problem you created. You employ seditions because you told us in your proper agenda that you were going to uplift 1.5 million people out of poverty. By definition of this, this piece of joke that gave us, you must create 300,000 jobs every year to meet that number, which of course I know is a myth, it's a political fallacy. But to sit here today, my brother, and spell what is going out for us, that is not true. Thank and let me say this to you. You always you talk about foreign direct investment. Let me finish. No, let me finish on this point. Liberia needs to Lobo, get this spread on foreign are, direct investment. We, Mr. Lobo, I can, let me I can, tell you that, Mr. Lobo, I can quick. call you to a point. I can wait to you. Yeah. Right. We, we are not really having a debate between what CDC did and what Ellen did. Mm -hmm. So I want us to focus on the economics of sports. That's, that's true. So now let's talk about something here. Let me, let me put this in a nutshell. The caller said that the business condition is not conducive on a George. And uh, uh, Morris was trying to justify that argument. He, re he, he referred to the situation that was inherited. Now what I have to do to respond is to tell him the situation he inherited and then respond to the question. Here is what happened, okay? The business conditions on the judge are not favorable. They are not suitable for investment because George have increased wasteful spending. George have legalized corruption. So for businesses to thrive, we all agree on this panel that the government must create an enabling environment, which okay. of course, that is one that CDC have not done. The People came to the National Housing Authority to invest. We heard a tape, they were taking money from them. So technically, or Morris, I want to say to you, my dear brother, this is a self-created problem. If you believe that your revenue is not enough, you must understand in business that the business will never incur the loss. If you increase tariff, the business will pass down the cost to consumers. So it is unfortunate for you to tell me that the man who is a proper president is going to increase tariff and make businesses difficult for the people he claimed to be a proper president for. I don't get the map behind it, but I get this one at first one. So they got what they asked for. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, George, very much. Um, so, you know what, George, we want to get, we may, you know, we've been trying to have this discussion going about our lawyer partner thing, but I see that, you know, there's, there's so much more to cover um, and we are running out of time. So we got 15 minutes, so we have to move this to to next week because George and Alex no seriously because we don't have time but George 
I want you to look at this this picture that uh the pool's right here. Yeah, George, I want you to look at this and, and, and picture. And we, and we still have a list of colors. And yeah. I mean, we still got 15 minutes. We gotta, we gotta. Yeah. Dennis, Dennis, we are, we, we, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna have this loader thing next week. Right. So, okay. So because, but colors. George, yeah, please, please take some other callers. George, I see a iron lady in the back here. Oh, I know what you're doing. partnership. I'm always so you're gonna have to have next week. We'll talk about that a little bit more. Dennis, please bring another I, caller. I'm uh, uh, Depot, just just uh, conclude your thoughts, then I will bring in uh, Steve Bole. Yes, you know, that, as I said earlier, uh, one minute. I think the issue of sports commercialization of sports is articulated in the TOPO agenda is on page 39. So, uh, Alex, who is arguing, you have not taken down the video's document. It seems to be that people are always anxious about whatever happened to George here is it can override whatever good thing that he has as a government. So he needs he needs to read that aspect. I have but read what it. I just want to say here, I, I, I have I have really, uh, to, to be very frank, uh, the response that came from uh, Sir Morris is, is something that we need to look at. As, as, as we look at economic development and economic growth strategy, I think one of the things that the, the current administration have actually aired on is not about inheriting tax rates. The problem that there is that it's, it's very much important that you look at as a government, you look at your tax base and determine the rate. The, the best thing that there is that in the wake of the shrinking tax base that we have, where there are many of the major taxpayers are not there, you want to make sure that you reduce your rate in order that it will become an incentive for the taxpayer to actually pay. But the higher the rate, in the more avoidance and the more corruption you have in a country like Liberia, where there's no electronic system to track any transaction. So the best thing to do is for the government to reduce the tax rate. For example, the post you were talking about, by now the, the government should have actually managed for them to reduce the port clearance. The, the, the more chip you have that dark on a day, the more revenue you get. But if you don't do that or invest in that, and the lesser share that that you have not no continue, you, you'll be chasing if you continue with higher price, and as a result, you definitely want to be a loser. So I, I think it's better for us to be realistic and let them know. Even the market people, the market women who do cross border trade, they are also struggling because first of all, the exchange rate is already a challenge for them, and the inflation is very high. The more they go out, and the tax rate is high. You see, the, the economy will, will completely struggle it after this right now. It's about time for them to Mr. come up with some easy strategy as well as for the, for, the, for the economy, for revenue generation. Thank you. Thank you. Can I come here on your session? No, no just, just hold on. There's no more debate between Ellen and uh, we are on this. Yeah, no, tonight. just talk economics here. All right. Let me, let me bring in Mr. Steve Bully. <laughs> Mr. Bole, you have one minute. If you use part of that time to talk about the Labrian women, you'll be reducing your time. <laughs> we already do the other beautiful, most beautiful will be the way. So. Mr. Bole. Well, th th thank you, Mr. Ja. Uh, I, I like to start, I like to start this conversation by saying, you know, um, the Labrian are the most important people because all of the, the ideas, suggestions, and even, you know, the arguments of back and forth we have, you know, today that we are listening to, um, it, 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 it's, in, it's in regards to the Liberian people. So I believe the Liberian people are the most important people on the face of the earth. That is my honest belief. But also, I, I also like to, to, to remind the Liberian women that they are the most beautiful women on earth. That's why Mr. Ja married a Liberian woman, George Lugo married a Liberian woman, and almost everybody on this, phone, on this line here today, you know, <laughs> Marry a Liberian woman as well, but like, let me let me let me say well, something in terms of. I think this is a beautiful topic. Uh, I think this is a beautiful topic, and I think the government should the government should listen to so many suggestions here. In in and like 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 most of the callers have said, nowadays everything in Liberia is politicized to some extent. Up to the extent now that the conversation is shifting towards you know, Ellen did this and Joanna did this, you know. Let's focus. I think I think if we focus on what what the present government can do and start shifting the blame or back uh, what happened back then, in as much as we can point to some flaws, it's good. But typical example, look at what neighbors, Ivory Coast, how they uh, hollow two way 
and, and all these guys go to, to, to Arsenal and all these big clubs, it was because they focus on, yeah. on sports. The Atec, Atec Mimosa has a very big academy in Abidjan over there, and these guys make millions of dollars. Not only that, they, not only that it helps eradicate poverty from, 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 from young people among us, or the young generation, but it, it, it has the ability to, to, to attract the international world to, to our country as well. Consider the look at George Weah. George Weah came up, nobody knew George Weah. Football brought him to prominence. And so I think my suggestion here going forward for the country lead and for other sporting activities is for us to, to, to try to, to, to be strategic about it. Yesterday I was listening to, to, to the show and we were talking about managers. The importance of hiring managers, people that are strategic, people that understand what to do that can play. So one of my strategies would be how about the next coming up country lead um, yeah. um, instead of just instead of just keeping it local and saying oh the country that should each country should represent let's let's start off from 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 January from January right after the country is done the finals is played let's start off by those different counties let's say Magidi because I'm from Magidi let's say in Magidi all the local areas the local right. zones let the Ministry of Sport watch them provide funds for them let them play you know organize the way in which they will play to 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 to, to to come together to ensure that one team emerges from there to represent it in the country needs. But at least let it be followed and let, 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 let the government invest into it because if you want to make money, you got to spend money. So I would say the government should invest into the country need and, and broaden it and bring more strategy in and, and, and make it open so that, you know, it can generate more funds. But I think the idea of sports is a very good idea to, to, to incorporate in our economy, to raise the economy. Thank, thank you so much. Th thank you. Let me bring in one more caller. And yes. so please be brief now. Uh, follow your name and where you're calling from. You have 59 seconds. Constance, Constance Duopu. Welcome, Calling from Minnesota. Your question or comment? And uh, thank you. And I wanted to speak to two issues, first of all, the sporting event and uh, the economy. I know someone said, Sports has nothing to do with the economy. I think that is wrong. Sports play a vital, vital role in raising the economy of a country if it is done right. And the last speaker said it right. I think we have IE, Baru, other clubs that were in Liberia that were well known. I think it's about time for people to be created and sell those things to people who are able to promote those things instead of people just talking about Arsenal and other things and use that, you can raise a lot of money. I don't want to talk because the other caller talk on that. But I want to talk about uh, the shipping and the economy. I got my party thing, Maurice man on the show and everybody talking to him. But why it is true I'm a sedition, I'm a Liberian. I will be the last person to go and see this what to fall, but we speak true. The economy is not doing good, and we're not going to blame. We're not going to do the adding thing. We were taxed with the responsibility. I think we should listen, and we should be strategic. We should not just do the Machiavellian way or leadership. It is good when people criticize you for you to prove yourself right. People say CDC couldn't come to power. We are rising to power. It is time for us to prove and improve the lives of our people. So my suggestion to my party and the coalition is that they, we need to take a step back. We need to forget about the blame game and we need to focus on things. I know people want to raise money, revenue, but you cannot raise revenue and use the same people that voted for us and just increase taxes, you know, to the extent that it is unbearable for your own citizens. So these are things that we know that 2020 our government will look at and will come up with solutions. Thank you. Excellent comment, uh, uh, ma'am. Uh, ma Thank you, Constant. That was very, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> William, please bear with me. Let me bring on a... Uh... My man, my man, Dennis, man, when they show you <laughs> we got, we got, we got, we got five more minutes for the show to end. Okay, let yeah, go. Yeah, I think we need to, we need to review government performance, though. So we look at the previous government and this government. I will come on one day. Yeah, that's a, that's a separate show because we're trying to put it in the the economy of sports. 
William Kelter, at another sedition called a city. No, he's not a sedition. William, oh no, Wilton Kelter. Thank you so much. I'm not a sedition. I'm yeah, yeah. government. You have one minute. I love my country. So, so, so this is the thing here. Yeah, I, I, I will talk, touch on a few things somebody, some people said here. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to sports in Liberia, it was just in the late 80s that Liberian, uh, Liberia started to really embrace and know the importance of soccer. When we were playing soccer when we were little boys, they were saying that soccer like we're not boys, but our parents put us to go to school instead of playing soccer. This is the reason why Liberia, with all the talent we had in the, in the 70s and the 80s, the, 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 the early 80s, where they came to, they came to America yeah, and began to test the and other things and had to go back uh, without doing anything. George, we are the first person, and it took a foreigner to go to Liberia to spot in an African to spot in plane to take him out of Liberia, and that's how our soccer started boom. So right in, in that same time, we experienced civil war, and boom, what happened? Everything went down. 14 years, we have never, you know, I mean, since that time, it just probably doing any time, half of the end of any time, and this present government that our soccer start to pick up again and I know it was it will go further and it will be strong. I said the Muslim being around forever and the people have structure and they invested in their their, their, their sporting activity in articles before like the Russia they even invest in, in a sporting activity. The people musicians Alpha blonde then they make millions when we were thinking when we were having musicians like all not even making a, a penny. So we should not compare Ivory Coast with Liberia when it comes to that. Nothing we should compare Liberia. All our things we've been doing, they have only been around politics and only based in Morocco to the economy. The economy was damaged on the end of the For us for us to improve our economy and because our economy depends on foreign investment or foreign donation, the people want to see us clean our records from corruption. And this government is moving in that direction. This is the reason why they were able to accomplish the harmonization. They were able to accomplish a lot of things, restructuring the central bank, and so money coming in. So we not second. just be blaming and acting. Up. Thank you. Thank you all. No, no, let me respond to, to that. To those Charles, lies. I don't like lies. Hey, Dennis, let, me, let me take my last caller. Call out your name and where you calling from. Hey, Dennis, this is Monu from uh, Las Vegas. Monu, welcome. Quick you things, yeah, One minute, guys, One I minute please. Guys, I know you guys are about to close. So yeah. um, the first thing with regards to Wea, uh, if Wea have branded himself, I think that's one of the problems, uh, the issue that I had with Wea. He never branded himself as an icon, which he was. This guy was a global soccer icon. If he had branded himself, he, he would have, even up till now, become the ambassador for soccer. The whole soccer. This guy had about 2 billion people, two, not million, 2 billion people in the world that, you know, respected him. So that's the soccer population from uh, somewhere I read. 2 billion people follow soccer. He was their hero. I remember when I was living in California, uh, back in the 90s, there's this guy that I used to work with. When he found out I was a Liberian, he told me, he said, come. He was from Australia. He said, come come to my house and meet my son, Kevin. I went into Kevin's room. Kevin had, I didn't know who George Weah was. Kevin had his entire room as a shrine to George Weah. That, it was through little Kevin, a little white white kid that I got to know who George Weah was. He, had, he was showing me albums with George Weah at, I don't know, uh, Claritine, Zeta, all sort of things. He had a Liberian flag. George Weah was his icon, but we have never and imagined it. We are, we are probably have like three, four hundred million people in the world like that. He could have been the icon for soccer, tourism, and fashion to Liberia. Thanks. And another thing I quickly wanted to say was um, we, we keep talking about, you know, solving problems, entrepreneurship, and all that. But a lot of Liberian business people in the United States do not know that there's an organization called OPIC within the United States that gave financing to Liberia. As I speak, they've got something like 10 projects in Liberia right now. And there are people in Liberia that they finance. One guy 
individual they just gave twenty million dollars too. Mm. So if you got a good business plan, you got a project, a project that also has you know uh, climate change as part of it, or uh, uh, you know those are the sort of projects that they tend to finance, or if it's a, a, a project that they cater to the bottom billion poor folks and stuff like that. You get as, as I speak. Ten projects in Liberia right now. So it's called OPEC, the overseas. Uh, that was the key Please, stand please, for, please text it to us so we we'll share with so we we'll share with our viewers. Yeah, yeah. So they gave money to Liberian entrepreneurs. Th thank you. Been thank you so for much. A few you? years, like I said, just yes, last month, twenty twenty million dollars was given to a guy in Liberia. To set up, you say you have some sort of organization that uh, that gives all uh, money to you know uh, the down children. He got twenty million dollars. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So so okay. let's let's conclude the show. We are yeah, out of time. Uh, 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 and Charles cannot Morris, come in. Yeah, Morris, you will be the first, and that will, you can wrap up, and that will be your final comments. You have one minute each. So we have five minutes to close for five of for five of you. Uh, and and it is sad that. And our professional colleagues will come here and reduce the the professional economic forum to who did this and who did this. And the issue, the economic issue in Liberia, we cannot blame it on George We are that's an inherited part. Everything we're experiencing today in Liberia is the consequence of our failure to, 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 to structure a strong economic framework for Liberia in the 70s. If you look at our, our growth rate and our own activities, so today, 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 today the, those constraints that we're talking about, let me say this, this government, you cannot tell me where the government increased taxes. What I know the government cut taxes and cut, and cut expenditure. Nobody can tell me here what, on, on which commodity that the government increased taxes. The, uh, uh, those charges are the port, those charges the government inherited them and reduced some of them. And, and, and people think that this government, because uh, uh, the constraint on the government is to, is to respond to uh, 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 the, the government day to day expenditure. What, what government getting money from? It's from those terror taxes. So, until that, that's why the government is focusing on the role construction to expand the economy. When you expand the economy, a lot of economic activities going on, the, the revenue envelope will increase. When that happens, then the government will see how they, 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 they can reduce taxes on some of the commodity. But as we stand, if the government reduces the, the taxes that she inherited, the government will collapse. It's not about politics. I, I want to reduce it to CDC versus the United Party. The government will increase taxes. You, you can conclude now. Yeah. Have so, five so more seconds to conclude. It, it, is sad, it is sad that we will come here and, and want to reduce professional conversation to party. It's sad. And you know, it, it, the owner money yeah. intent of the forum. Th thank you. Mr. Lobo, you have one second for your concluding statement. One no. second and finish you. No, one minute. Go uh, ahead. Uh, no, no. Uh, uh, Dennis, let me, let me say this. Uh, First and foremost, I want to thank all Liberians, those who call in, uh, those who are watching us, wherever part of the world you follow this show from. You know, I like to always lead session of conversation with a fruitful conclusion. I don't like to walk off the stage having the correct lies. Uh, I heard my dear brother Morris once again, speaking of professionalism. Being a professional, you must be able to state the facts. That's one thing. Accountability as a professional is key. You can't be telling us about professionalism when you're making statements that are not factual, that are not, that have no, you have no argument to support. Uh, you want to talk about the economic climate you inherited. You inherited a reserve of $154.8 million. You inherited an economy of $530 million budget. What we inherited was a budget of $80 million with a reserve of $6.5 So I don't know your argument here. I listened to a sedition who said earlier 
that the government have shown responsibility by the wage harmonization. I wish you understood what wage harmonization means. Nowhere in the world that a government reduces income doing a slow economy with high inflation. That in itself is the most professional way of killing somebody. Thank you. Killing them softly. I think the effect is out there now we can tell. But I leave this show today. I want to thank everyone. What I've tried to do in this world is not to be able to tell people who's good or bad. My job here is to be able to prove to the Liberian people that they are Liberians, young Liberians, who understand the problem, who have solutions to these issues. They are Liberians who are trustworthy. They are Liberians they can look up to and say, you know what? This man says the truth. This man stands for the fact. Yeah, My job here is not to become a party. And I want to thank all of you, whether you agree or disagree with me. I wish you all the best. Mr. Ja, Alex, William. Uh, it's been a good time. A good friend and brother, Morris. Uh, it's a pleasure. Hopefully you can be around most of the time. I want to say thanks to all of you. To our many colors, thank you. God bless you and God bless the Republic. Thank you. Alex? Okay, so my one minute, I want to use it to do this, all right? Uh, we're here to discuss the Loretta uh, investment in Liberia. And you see this guy right behind me and people that stand jousting. These are the people who got our country where it is today, okay? Um, and maybe over the, over the time, over the, over the subsequent weeks and months, we'll reveal how to do that. This is the LBDR balance sheet, okay? First of all, most balance sheets today in West Africa is converting the U.S. dollars because of the, the, the volatile exchange rate. They chose to put in like brand dollars because they think some people can't convert it and so forth. So for this balance sheet, what I look at, they say they have an income of $5 million. They boast that they've been the oldest bank in Liberia. They've been there for, what, 40, 50 years. But that's a disgrace when there's banks like Echo Bank that just came up in 1986, went to Liberia and making more than $20 million a year. And this bank sits there. The administrative cost of the bank is $4 million. That's how much they pay themselves and travel allowances, right? General administration cost right there, okay? The profit, okay, only $508 million they're making. So these are the kind of stuff when people should be looking at. Our banks are poorly managed. Another, another, another quick uh, 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 coming here. They say this is the auditor. The auditor that they say it is the auditor has nothing to do with Liberia. It's called a uh, Baker's Teller, all right? It's just a, it's, it's, it's a licensed uh, company, just like a trademark company. So I'm revealing a lot of facts for the Liberian people and some of these people who are going to go to jail when I'm done with them because they've been defrauding the Liberian people. This bank should be the bank that should be investing in sports. It should be the bank that should be investing in our, our communities. They should be the bank. Instead, what are they doing? They take the money, all right, like you really said, what is The bank is only worth $15, $15 million. Echo Bank pay taxes of over $100 million a year that just been around. And you have people that say Johnson because they, get, they, know they, they know these people, these fools that say they're running banks in Liberia that don't help. The, it's an investment bank. The, 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 the goal is to help develop investment, develop banks, That's development the banks. Because they get personal loan, they go out there and they support these things. And this is corruption. So when we talk about corruption in Liberia, we shouldn't just talk about government corruption. We let us look into deep down, and I'm going to go through all the financials, and I'm going to put everything out there so that our brain people can see how these people are benefiting off of, on the backs of the poor people in Liberia. Thank you very much. Thank you. And we're going to go into the story uh, today. We discussed mainly the economy of sports, so we're not able to go to that uh, Loita investment partnership. William, you're, mm -hmm. you're passing. So next week, uh, bring all those records out and go yeah about thank you go ahead William. Um, uh definitely guys next week we're going to be continue talking about this uh loetta thing uh i got i got so much to say about this so liberia uh i went to the central bank of liberia and i went there to specifically speak about uh some investors and also for investment banking for a license for banking in Liberia. And uh, next week, next week, I hope people tune in. Next week, I hope people tune in 
because uh, it's going to be very interesting how uh, in Liberia right now, delayed tactics. I want everybody to know that sometimes they don't tell you no, but they delay you. And a delay in the business world is as good as a no. So uh, next week, we're going to be toning in. I have some uh, information, personal experiences and everything like that. And so when we come on here to talk about the Economic Business Forum for Liberia, we want uh, viewers to really tune in and understand that, you know, whether we go up or we come down, we Liberians, we are the biggest roadblock to our uh, economic progress. It's not the world, it's we Liberians. We are we Liberians. And some of the information will be shocking that I will bring up that even you as a Liberian, it would not make you want to sleep because the kind of ways that they treat you when you go to Liberia to do something, it's, uh, it's uh, insane. So, um, you know, anyway, uh, until next week, uh, George, that picture that Alex showed uh, about that in that newspaper article, that's a very, very uh, telling picture of everything that is good and everything that is difficult uh, with Liberia. And so you will see that where the rubber hits the road, it has nothing to do with political parties. It has to do with the greasing of palms and, and uh, money going in and money out. And that polit politics is just a little shade, but I will hold my peace until next week. Thanks for all the viewers. Okay. They all are invited. Just in fairness, they all are invited on the show. They can scrutinize every document that will be published. They, will, they have the opportunity to respond. So they can't say that they don't, we didn't call them, but everything will be recorded. Like, people. And, and we are extending the uh, invitation to the, to the, uh, the reason why governments. Mr. Davis of LBDI, we want them to get into the here on focus on like Russell will discuss. But as we close, I want to thank all of you guys for, for coming and sharing your experience and your knowledge with us and our viewers. We're going to end with a song, and this song will be and it says something that I want us to remember. This gonna say, eat nothing but drink.